Hi, this is Jacob Anderson, and this is another video of my series of headstock repair videos to answer you know, common questions and problems. Today I'm going to talk about the headstock lock, and this is the part that keeps the headstock from sliding on the weight tubes. It holds it in position where you need it, whether it's in drill press mode or for sawing or whatever. You need to have the headstock securely in position relative to your uh, table or lathe work or whatever. But the headstock lock's real simple. It's just a threaded rod, two wedges, and the handle. That's all of the parts that are involved. The two wedges sit into these sockets here. They slide in when they're tightening. They slide out when they're loosening. So that's the correct position and the flat sides are always down facing those way tubes. So again, you tighten it up, both of them come in and squeeze against the tubes. You loosen them, they both slide out as far as they'll go. So the way, that, the way it looks is you just see like a disc portion of each of these wedges sticking out a little bit. Now the threaded rod is threaded in opposite directions so that they go opposite of each other. And the handle has a hole in it. This handle is drilled to go all the way through the rod. And then there's a roll pin that goes through the handle and through the rod. Now frequent problems with this is just dust buildup. You can get dust in the threads on the inside or outside. So you have to keep the rod clean around the wedge. Also, the wedges themselves are softer metal than the rod. So sometimes if you over tighten or over loosen, you end up stripping metal off the inside of these wedges and it jams up the threads and then one of them won't turn anymore, or both of them won't turn anymore. So uh, that's a big problem. Uh, you have to have both of them be able to move. So I see a lot of machines that have that problem where the metal is torn off and messes up the threads. Sometimes you can clean the threads up with a wire brush. Sometimes it's just too impacted or too distorted. The wedges you're not really going to save unless somehow you want to do some tap and die work. They're, they're inexpensive enough. You can just buy you know, buy the replacement wedges or buy the rod or buy the whole works from Shopsmith. So uh, sometimes if things are jammed up too bad the rod will be in position through these wedges. There's been times I've just had to saw the rod right in half just to be able to get them both out. If you're able to move both wedges and you just want to replace everything, you can. Uh, I, I like to keep the handle in place as long as possible, but I usually turn the outer, the back wedge, turn it in by hand as close to the center as you can get it, and then you're able to kind of uh, push and you lift it out like this. And then when you go to put the new one in, same thing. Have this one close to the center. This one can still be pretty far out. And uh, you can slide it in, slide it in that way, rotate them back. But the trickiest thing is this handle setup. Uh, you always want to use the same handle that came with the rod, because if you try to drill through this hard rod, you'll end up breaking drill bits uh, just making a mess of things. But while you're when you're putting it back on, I like to use a piece of bright paper underneath and rotate the handle until I can see clearly through to the white paper. And then I know I'm in the right position to push the roll pin through the hole, hammering it, hammering it in. And you have to be careful. Uh, I always like to hammer it in this position here so that you're hammering is down into all this metal. If you had it this way you might crack this, or if you had it upside down you might crack that. 
So uh, you know, be hammering down where there's more metal supporting the blows. But uh, that's one of the trickier things is just getting those holes lined up. A bright piece of paper underneath really helps you see. Then you can set it in there and finish hammering it through. So that's that's all there is to the headstock lock. Uh, a few common problems, pretty easily taken care of. It's best to take the motor off so you have access to all of that. And if you're doing things like sawing the rod in half to get it out of there, you don't want metal shavings falling inside your motor anyway. So just have the motor out of the way and you can access that real easy. And for customers who've sent their headstock in for repairs, I try I always send it back with the wedges down. But if you go to put it back on your wet your weight tubes, if it stops this far, it's just one of those wedges that are out of position from shipping. So you can reach in by hand and rotate them to get the flat side down again so that the weight tubes can slide on nice and easily. Alright, so take a look at my website also. You'll find my repair services there. You'll find my web store link there. I sell uh, some of the repair parts like the belts and the bearings and switches and some other things for headstock repairs. So go to my website. Lots of information there. Go to my web store. If you want to send in components for evaluation or repair, you can do that. If you want to send in your full headstock for repair, you can do that. If you want to do it yourself and buy the bearings and belts and such from me and my repair videos, you can do that through those sites as well. Alright, thank you.